Yes, yes. Oh, we have a genius, ladies and gentlemen. He solved the Middle East. He solved this. It's the Jewish comedians. That's who we have to get. All right, I want you to see this uh, very cool uh, video that was taken by an audience member of one of Jerry Seinfeld's stand-up routines. He was down in Australia, and he started to get heckled by pro-Hamas, pro-terrorist murder sympathizers. And uh, watch how Jerry Seinfeld handles it. Yes, yes. Oh, we have a genius, ladies and gentlemen. He solved the Middle East. He solved this. It's the Jewish comedians. That's who we have to go. They're the ones doing everything. You better keep going. They're going to start punching you in about three seconds. So I will try and get all of your genius out so we can all learn from you. It's a comedy show, you moron. Get out of here. Okay. Yeah, this is so great. Imagine, by the way, imagine if this guy actually did solve the. <laughs> yes. So you're you're really influencing everyone here. We're all we're all on your side now because you have made your point so well and in the right venue. You come to the right place for a political conversation. Tomorrow we will read in the paper, Middle East 100% solved thanks to man at the Kudos Arena stopping <laughs> Jew comedian. They stopped him and everyone in the Middle East went, oh my God, let's just get along. We can't do that. Because I know there are problems here with uh, indigenous Aboriginal people and the white people. They have problems here, so maybe to solve that, I will screw up Jim Jeffries in a show in New York. <laughs> if this works, that will work. You have to go 20,000 miles from the problem and screw up a comedian. That is how you solve world issues. Absolutely brilliant and fantastic and wonderful. And we can all take a lesson from this, honestly. Uh, no, we're not all stand-up comedians, but we have to deal with that guy who stands up and starts screaming. We have to deal with it all the time. I deal with it on my social media, don't you? You know, you're the problem. You're enabling people getting murdered because of your political positions. You're, you're allowing children to kill themselves because you think that men are men and women are women. And you're contributing to the suicide of teenagers by not allowing your children to be talked into changing their gender. This is, this is the kind of ridiculous, outrageous, deceitful, hateful political rhetoric people engage in. You know, because you want to vote for the guy you want to vote for, I and people in my subcategory of humans will be murdered. So this guy stands up to Jerry Seinfeld and says, you're the problem. You're the problem in the Middle East. And he's like, yeah, the Jewish comedians were the problem. We got to stop all the Jewish comedians and we'll solve the entire thing. Got to deal with people like this with ridicule. And I know it's hard to, you know, think about how hard it is. It's not easy for Jerry Seinfeld either, I would think. He just wants to tell jokes. He wants to make people laugh. He's in the middle of a concert, sold out theater in Sydney, Australia. He's trying to make people laugh. And then someone stands up, talk about, you know, harsh in the mellow. Talk about changing the mood in the room. Guy stands up and calls him a murderer of innocent children in Gaza. And what's his crime? Why is he guilty of that? Because he's Jewish. That's not an easy thing for anybody to hear. I don't, listen, I believe that, that women's sports being destroyed by transgender activists is an existential threat to the innocence of young girls in this country, that they will have to be exposed to male genitalia against their consent. 
in their preteens and teenage years. I think that's a serious problem. I'm not even getting into the genital mutilation, the the chemical sterilization. We can debate that as well. Let's just talk about that one thing. The transgender activists want fully intact males to be able to disrobe in front of young minor children, minor girls, and being able to see them disrobe as well without their consent. That's the bottom line of the people who are advocating for men to participate in women's sports and utilize their facilities like locker rooms and restrooms. All right. I think that is incredibly destructive. And when I voice that, I am told that I'm contributing to the suicide of, of young troubled children. Now, by the way, let's just say that if my political position on wanting to protect women's private spaces is going to lead a transgender youth to kill themselves, maybe the whole transgender situation does include a mental health component. If you are freely admitting that they are that close to suicide, if you don't affirm everything that they do, that tells me they've got some mental health issues. And maybe they should address that before they go ahead and start chopping their body parts off. But my point is, it's a challenge to be able to state that position and then only hear back at you, you're going to lead to the suicide of children because nobody wants to be responsible for children to commit suicide. So, of course, they say things like that so that you will just shut up. You'll say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't say anything else. I don't want any children to kill themselves. That's what they want from Jerry Seinfeld. They want him to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want children to die in Gaza either. I'll stop being Jewish. But Jerry Seinfeld is a wise man. Jerry Seinfeld knows that the way you deal with these people is through ridicule to expose how outrageous their positions are and how, frankly, worthy of ridicule and mockery that they are, how they deserve to be laughed at. It's the opposite of what they're expecting. And when I say Jerry Seinfeld is a wise man, he's wise because he's seen things. He's seen the reality of Gaza, and he knows who's really responsible for the slaughter and murder of children. You made Seinfeld during a period that I think will be remembered as like the golden age of American Jewish life. And I because wonder... anti-Semitism was a relic, a seemingly a relic yeah. of, of, uh, history of history books. I think people felt like yeah. history had ended and yeah. the American Jewish experience was fundamentally singular and right. different from any other diaspora experience. Right, of course. And well, I wonder... A, if you thought about the Jewishness of the show. Never. Okay. And do you think about it differently now? Now yes. that that period's over. Yeah, well. Or ended. When I first time I went to Israel after I had done finished the show and I saw the way they reacted to me and I realized this is not just normal interaction of celebrity public interface. This is different. How? Um, I meant something, which I never knew. And... Um, it gave me a, a wonderful uh, feeling like, oh, I didn't realize what I was doing had another value mm. that I, I didn't know about. And I, 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 of course, loved it. You have always seemed just apolitical, I guess is the word, like above, okay. the, above the fray. Okay. And, you know, that everything feels politicized right now. Yeah. And so you yourself have become politicized in a way a little bit yeah do you feel that i do you comfortable with it it's so dumb it's so dumb uh, in <laughs> fact when we get protesters occasionally i love to say to the audience you know i love that these young people they're trying to get engaged with politics we have to just correct their aim a little bit uh, <laughs> you know they don't seem to be understand that as comedians we really don't control anything right you know right right no one's really uh no you're pulling the strings over the war in gaza right? yeah that's how i think of you. yeah yeah you've done a bunch of shows obviously you're constantly doing shows you mm -hmm. did one in syracuse mm -hmm. in december that attracted protesters and then they were chanting that you're complicit in genocide then when i gave this talk in february at the y there was this footage of you where they were calling you a genocide supporter and Nazi scum. And the 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 
thing that jumped out at me was not the things they were saying, of course, because they say it to anyone. Yeah. It's that you were smiling and waving and genuinely seemed to be enjoying yourself. Yeah. Were you? Yeah. Why? It's it's so silly. It's like you know, they want to they want to uh express this, you know, sincere uh um intense rage. Uh but again, a little <clears throat> off target. Right. <laughs> right. A <laughs> little off target. So uh that's to me comedic. Mm. You know. You were in Israel yes. since the war started. Mm -hmm. How was that trip? Oh. Uh the most uh powerful experience of my life. Really? I'm sure. Yeah. Why? Um You know, you just Are you thinking of someone in particular? Um. Sorry. When you've seen what Jerry Seinfeld has seen and you've got a wit like Jerry Seinfeld has and you've got observations on the world that he's always had well before the events in Israel and his trip there, um, honestly, you don't have time for somebody standing up in the middle of the crowd saying that he's responsible for the murder of anybody over in the Middle East. He knows better. He knows a lot. He's an observer of the world. And that's why he responded in such a masterful way. And that's a lesson that we could all learn.